Hello, my dudes, welcome back to the Perky Tomato. Hey guys, welcome back to Perky Tomato, and today I am going to be reading chapter 4 out of um, Kit Learns a Lesson, which is, a, which is an, an, an American Girl book out of this giant Kit story collection that has a bunch of Kit stories. But um, we're in chapter 4, and yeah, so let's just go. I'm really not that good at explaining what this series is, but um, you can check the description box if you really want to know about it. So um, yeah, we are reading chapter 4 out of Kit Learns Lesson, and this chapter is called Kit's, is called Kit's Hard Times. So as you know, in this other chapter, chapter 3, um, Kit went to the soup kitchen, and Dad was there, and she was like, what? So, yeah. Okay. Kit! Dad gasped. Kit couldn't breathe. She felt as if someone had punched her hard in the stomach. Shock, disbelief, and a sickening feeling of terrible shame shot through her as she stared at Dad. Suddenly, Kit could not bear any more. She pushed past Ruthie and Sterling and bolted through the swinging doors. She ran through the kitchen and past the stoves with kettles of soup that she had that had billowing clouds of steam rising from them. She burst out the back door into the alley. Once she was outside, her legs felt wobbly, and she sagged against the hard brick wall. In a moment, Ruthie and Sterling were beside her. Kit, said Ruthie gently. Are you okay? Kit nodded. She looked at Ruthie. Is my dad still, she began. Your dad left, said Ruthie. He said he'd talk to you at home. Kit took a shaky breath. Come on, said Ruthie. Let's go. Sterling grabbed the wagon handle, and they started down the alley, with an empty wagon rattling and banging noisily behind them. Slowly, miserably, and without talking, the three of them walked together until they came to the end of Ruthie's driveway. They stopped next to her shack of lumber, left over from the new garage, and Ruthie turned her sad face towards Kit. Listen, she said. Everything's going to be all right. All right? Kit repeated. She shivered. No. Ruthie, she said, everything's not going to be all right. My father hasn't been having job interviews. He's been going to a soup kitchen. He had to just get something to eat, to get the food, to get food for our family to eat. Kit's voice shook. Dad's not going to get a job here in Cincinnati. Maybe he would have a better chance of finding one in Chicago. I guess, Kit faltered, then went on. I guess now I hope that he will go. No, you don't, said Sterling in his husky voice. <sighs> Kit frowned. What do you know about what I want? she asked. Your father is in Chicago, sending you a letter with money stuck in him. No, said Sterling. His gray eyes looked straight at Kit. He isn't. What are you talking about? asked Kit. I saw the money. That was my twenty dollars, Sterling said. My father gave it to me before he left. He told me to save it for an emergency. Sterling sighed, and then he poured out the whole story. My mother hasn't been able to pay any rent since we moved in, he said. I offered the, her the twenty dollars lots of times, but she offered, she always said no. Then a few weeks ago, she told me that we are going to have to leave your house. I knew it was because she was so ashamed to stay any longer without paying. She wouldn't feel so bad if she could help with the housework, but your mother won't let her. I figured if I could trick her into taking the twenty dollars, she might use it for rent. So I made her think it came in a letter from my father. Kit squinted at Sterling, trying to understand. You sneaked that money into the letter? she asked. Sterling shook his head. No, he said. It's worse than that. He paused. I wrote that letter myself. I typed it on your typewriter. What? Kit and Ruthie said together. The truth, Sterling hesitated. The truth is, I don't know where my father is, he said, but I'm pretty sure he's never coming back here to my mother and me. He flew the coop, as Roger said. Oh no, Ruthie sighed. Kit felt her hands clench into fit fists. So that's how I know you don't want your dad to go away. Wait, what? So that's how I know that you don't want your dad to go away, Kit, said Sterling earnestly. No matter what, it's better to have your dad at home, no matter how bad or hopeless things get. You don't want him to leave. Kit sat down hard in the wagon. She held her head in her hands. Sterling, said Ruthie, you'd better tell your own mom what you did. Sterling nodded. It was as if he used up all his words. Ruthie walked back up her driveway, backward waving goodbye until she went inside her house. 
Kit stood up tiredly as she trudged slowly home with the wagon and Sterling behind her. A new thought presented itself. When Sterling tells his mother about the letter and the money, they'll leave, she thought. She walked up the steps and opened her front door. They won't live in our house anymore. Of course, Kit had wanted Sterling and his fuss-budgety mother to leave ever since they've arrived, but now it was very peculiar. Now that it was about to happen, Kit did not feel glad. She stood in front in the front hall, which smelled of wet wool coats and dripping and dripping umbrellas, and watched Sterling head upstairs to the room he and his mother shared. Is that you, Lammy? Mrs. Howard called. Did you wipe your feet? Sterling looked back over his shoulder at Kit, and a quick silvery smile slipped across his face. Then he turned away and climbed the rest of the stairs. Slowly, Kit took off her coat and headed upstairs to change out of her school dress. As she passed by Mother and Dad's room, she opened the door. Kit, said Dad, come in here please, I'd like to talk to you. Kit went in and sat at the desk chair. I've already told your mother about what happened today, said Dad. I owed her an apology, and I owe you one, and Charlie one, too. I'm sorry that I misled all of you. I should have told you that I was what I was really doing. Dad walked over to the window and looked out. I've been going to get... I've been going to the soup kitchen for weeks now to eat and get food to bring home. We've been so short of food. It was the only way I could help contribute to this household. Are we... are we really that poor? asked Kit, in almost a whisper. Yes, said Dad, we are. But I don't want any of you to know. But I didn't want any of you to know. That's why I pretended not to be hungry here at home. I'd have lunch at the soup kitchen, and then I could give my breakfast or dinner away to make our, gro our groceries stretch further. Dad turned to Kit to face Kit. I shouldn't have led you to believe that I'd find a job here in Cincinnati soon. I guess it, my only excuse is that I wanted it to be true. Kit went to stand next to Dad, and he put his arms around his shoulder. But, said Dad, it's time for me, f it's time for me, for all of us, to face the truth. And the truth is that there's nothing for me to do here. And this is a photo right here. That's Dad and Kit. So if you're listening, you could come and look at the video. But, um, I don't know. What, okay, but, like, yeah. That's the photo. There's Dad and Kit. Okay, so. There's nothing for me to do here. There's no point in studying the want ads in the newspaper every day for a job that's never going to appear. So, your mother and I have decided I'm going to Chicago. Oh, Dad, cried Kit. You're not going to Chicago because of that letter from Stone's father, are you? Because... Dad held up his hand to stop her. I'm going, he said, because there's really no alternative. We don't have room in the house to take any more boarders, as we need. As we need. If I go to Chicago, maybe I can't find a job. Maybe I can find a job and send a little money back home. I don't want you to go, Dad, said Kit desperately. You'll have to write me and tell me what happens after I leave, Dad said, smiling a small smile. It'll be like the old days. Remember the newspapers you used to make for me? I loved them so much. When I'm going, when I'm gone, will you write newspapers and send them to me so I won't feel so far away? Kit nodded slowly. That's my girl, said Dad. You were my reporter during the good times, and I need you to be my reporter during the hard times, too. Hard times, thought Kit, dully, as she left Dad and walked down the hallway. The odor of onions frying rose up from the kitchen, and Kit knew that Mother must be making another one of those odd sauces she must she made it up so often nowadays, and that was meant to sh and that was meant to stretch a small piece of meat to feed a crowd. Kit heard Miss Hart and Miss Finney laughing together in their room, and Mr. Peck teaching Charlie to play his double bass fiddle, double bass, double bass. I can't even read. Okay. She thought about the chores waiting for her that that absolutely had to be done. Mother needed her to set the table for dinner and to scrub the potatoes and put them in the oven to bake. Then there was laundry to iron and fold it and put it away, all before dinner. This is, this is it, Kit thought. This is the truth of my life now, maybe forever. 
With heavy, de defeated steps, Kit climbed the stairs to her attic. How foolish she had been to think that her life was going to go back to the way it used to be. Kit sank into her desk chair. She cleared a space between her typewriter and a pile of papers and rested her hand on her arms. She had been wrong about so many things. Instead of resenting the borders, she should have been grateful for them. Instead of want wanting them to leave, she should have been trying to figure out a way to fit more borders in the house, because Kit felt pinpricks of fear up her spine, because there was no guarantee that Dad would find be able to find a job in Chicago either. What would become of her family? How would they... How would... Okay... How would they have enough money for food and clothes and heat? They would be so poor that they'd be kicked out of the, that they'd be kicked out of their own house? Question mark. Oh, I wish we had room for more borders. Kit thought passionately. And then Dad could stay. If Ruthie's right about wishes and you have to work hard to deserve them, then I promise to work as hard as I possibly can to make this one come true. Kit felt a drop of water on her hand. She looked up and saw a new leak in the roof that right above her desk. Drops of water plopped onto the papers next to her. Kit saw that the drops had blurred one of her tree house sketches. Oh well, what a difference does that make? She thought, shoving the papers aside. Dad won't be here to build it, and there's no use for the sketch or Ruthie's lumber now. Kit sat bolt upright. Unless, wait a minute, a treehouse? Boarding house? Suddenly, Kit had an idea. Although, all, sorry, not although, all through dinner, Kit was distracted thinking about her idea. The more she thought about it, the better she liked it. As soon as they were alone in the kitchen, washing dishes, ap dishes after dinner, Kit presented her idea to Mother. Mother, she said, I've been thinking. Ruthie's father has a stack of lumber left over from the new garage. He said, she, he said Ruthie and I could have it to build a treehouse. But I bet he wouldn't mind if we used the lumber to fix up Charlie's sleeping porch instead. If we made it nice enough, then maybe Mr. Peck would move in with Charlie. And then, Mother asked, then we could put two new boarders in Mr. Peck's room, said Kit. We could certainly use the money, said Mother. She sighed tiredly. But I just don't know if it could han if I could handle the extra work that two more boarders would be. Her face looked sad, especially after your father leaves. How about asking Mrs. Howard to help you with the housework instead of paying rent? Asked Kit. I'd still help, of course, too. But Mrs. Howard is a crack jack cleaner. Mother shook her head. I'm not sure she'd agree to that, she said. Oh, I think she would, said Kit. Sterling says she wants to help. Mother was quiet and thoughtful for a moment. Then she said, Kit, dear, it's very ingenious of you to have thought of all of this, and it would be very nice of you and Ruthie to sacrifice your treehouse lumber. But I'm afraid the afraid lumber for the renovation is not only our problem. We don't have money to pay a carpenter. Who do the work? Kit sighed and sat down at the kitchen table, discouraged. Then suddenly she and Mother looked at each other. They both had the same idea that at the same time, together, they said, Dad! Dad could do it, said Kit. He's a great at building things. Yes, agreed Mother, but the idea would have to be presented to him in, the right, in just the right way. Now that he has decided to go, it'll be hard to change his mind. Kit grinned from ear to ear. You leave that to me, she said, full of enthusiasm. I have a great plan. Mother smiled at last. All right, she said. Give it a try. Thanks, Mother, said Kit. She hugged Mother and then darted out of the kitchen door and flew up the stairs, two at a time. She didn't carry her plan. She couldn't carry out her plan alone, but she knew just whom to ask for help. Kit knocked on Sterling's door. Yes, said Mrs. Howard when she opened the door. Kit saw the room was neat as a pin. May I speak to Sterling, asked Kit. Mrs. Howard began to say no. He's very tired and... Then Sterling appeared from behind his mother. Sterling, said Kit, looking straight at him. Will you help me? Yes, said Sterling immediately. It was as though he'd been waiting for Kit's question for a long time. The next morning, when Dad sat down to breakfast, this is what he saw at his place. And with the page...
Alright, this is the newspaper. So he's seeing this at dad. The dad is seeing this at his place at breakfast. It says, Hard the Hard Times News, Special Thanksgiving Day Edition. Editor Kit Kittredge, artist Sterling Howard, advisor <laughs> Margaret Kittredge. Wanted. Tall bearded man to share sleeping porch with early rising agreeable teenager. Must play double bass and drink coffee. Call uh, car, call Charlie Kittredge. Wanted. Do you want do you have an interesting exciting stories to tell about adventures and nursing? If so, I'd like to hear them. Call Kit Kittredge. Wanted immediately. Talented handyman to fix sleeping to fix sleeping porch porch <laughs> so it will sleep too great hard working conditions call the kittredge family wanted neat and tidy lady to help with housekeeping in exchange for broom and board call margaret kittredge wanted kids with wagon to haul away leftover lumber suitable for use in fixing sleeping porch call ruthie smithens Wow, that's a newspaper, so all that wanted things. Kit, Sterling, and Mother sat on the edges of their seats watching Dad as he read the Hard Times news. When he finished reading, Dad glanced at Mother over the top of his over, over the top of the paper with a questioning look in his eyes. Mother smiled and nodded, then Dad smiled too. Well, said Dad, patting the paper, look at this. There's a construction job in these want ads. A boarding house needs to, be, needs to expand. It's right here in Cincinnati, close to home. Dad winked at Kit. In fact, it is at home. It's the perfect job for me. Kit ran to Dad and hugged him. So you'll stay then? Asked She asked. Yes, said Dad. I'll go talk to Ruthie's father about the leftover lumber today. He handed Kit's newspaper to Mrs. Howard. I think there's a job here that might interest you, Mrs. Howard. He said, Mrs. Howard read the one ads and exclaimed, My land! So there is. She turned to Mother. I'd love to help you with the housekeeping, she said. I'm very good at dusting. I've noticed that the upstairs hallway. That's Kit's job. Mother interrupted politely. But with two more boarders moving in soon, they'll there'll be plenty to do. And uh, I'd be glad for, to have your help. I'll start today, said Mrs. Howard. Kit stood next to Dad and looked around the breakfast table table as the newspaper was passed from hand to hand. Charlie and Mr. Peck were laughing and talking together about being roommates. Miss Hart and Finney and Miss Finney were b beaming at each other, looking as if they were brimming over with stories to tell. Suddenly, she heard a quiet voice next to her say happy thanksgiving kit it was sterling his great eyes were shining kit smiled happy thanksgiving she said that's the end so yeah that's the end um yeah oh my gosh that's the end so the next story is kit's surprise a christmas story so um yeah so if you enjoyed this video make sure you like subscribe comment down below because i love talking to you guys and i'll see you in my next video bye Enjoy the video, watch my hair. Subscribe and like the video, and most of all, share the channel. I'm eating chips, by the way.